This video is to help you revise the photosynthesis practical and in our class we looked at the effect of light intensity, so how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis. So will photosynthesis happen faster with more light or increased light intensity? So what happens? So firstly we start with a lab setup. What do you need? So here is your basic lab setup. This is all the material you need. For example, you need the lamp, that's for your light source. But most importantly, you need an aquatic plant, some type of pondweed, for example, Elodea or Canadian pondweed. And the reason why you need an aquatic plant is because you have to keep the plant underwater to visualise bubbles of oxygen. Because light intensity is the only factor to be varied, we have to ensure that there's a good supply of carbon dioxide. So you can do this by either using pond water or you can use sodium hydrogen carbonate solution, but you should know both. Both. So we're going to maintain temperature at 25 degrees Celsius and we're going to do this using a water bath and checking it with a thermometer. And the way in which we're going to vary light intensity is by using the ruler to measure distances to move the plant away from the lamp. So how are we going to measure the rate of photosynthesis? We're going to do this by counting the number of oxygen bubbles released per minute. Light intensity is altered by moving the plant fixed distances away from the light source. An important precaution is every time the plant is moved to a new distance, we must wait five minutes before we start to count the oxygen bubbles. This is to let the plant adjust to the new light intensity. So we move our plant to a particular distance, we wait five minutes and then we count the number of oxygen bubbles released for one minute and we repeat this and get the average of three for every distance. So move your plant along, wait five minutes and count the bubbles of oxygen released in one minute and repeat this for each of your distances. So at the end of your practical, you'll have a table fully completed. So you'll have your distance from your light source or your lamp. You'll have the light intensity using a particular formula. I'll go through that in a second. And then you'll have each of your three results and you get the average of them for each light intensity. So to calculate the light intensity, we use this formula and we use the figure 10,000 because we usually get our distances in centimetres. So you're going to get each distance, square it and divide it into 10,000. So at the end of your practical, the most important part of this practical is the graph. So you can see that with increasing light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis does increase up to a point. It comes to a certain point where the rate of photosynthesis does not increase. There is some factor that's limiting or preventing the rate from rising again. It could be carbon dioxide concentration or perhaps its temperature. So go and look at the exam questions. Look at the higher level questions and the ordinary level questions. The higher level questions always seem to connect enzyme activity as well. So bear in mind the dark stage reactions of photosynthesis are enzyme controlled so all of the factors that affect enzymes will have an impact on this type of practical and take a look at the ordinary level questions because this diagram comes up a lot and it's sometimes altered so take a look at higher and ordinary level it's good to do both and remember that section B, which deals solely with the practicals, is worth 15%. So it's really worth doing every single exam question higher on ordinary level and checking official marking schemes. So remember, these videos never replace using your textbook or doing past papers. Best of luck.